Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and checking out the Burkhart Guide for the 2012 presidential election. Now a lot of you may be curious why I decided to dedicate 12 to 15 minutes of my Monday afternoon to do a video like this. Well overall I have two objectives. First of all, a lot of you know that there's a strong part of me that is an analyst, that I like to analyze things, and especially when it comes to strategic things like the presidential election, it's something that's a strong interest of mine. So just entertain and indulge me for the next 12, 15 minutes as you check out what are some of the pathways that I think each of the presidential candidates has in order to reach the 270 electoral votes. Also, you'll take a look at what I consider true swing states and how they'll impact the Tuesday night elections. However, there's a second reason why I wanted to do this video for you tonight. Now, after reading Facebook posts, Twitter reads, blogs, etc., there's no doubt about it that this is going to be a very passionate battle to the end. No matter if you're a Romney supporter, an Obama support, a supporter, or undecided, there are strong implications that will definitely come out of the 2012 election. However, I want to just strongly emphasize and encourage to all of you that no matter what happens, that we will still be a great country and that we will still be in good hands. You know, it's funny because, you know, one of the reasons why I am getting into local government is because I get to see people's lives change for the better every day. I love the implementation process of government and the public service component is something that reminds me of the true beauty of government and democracy. So let's just celebrate the victory of democracy tomorrow during the election and the fact that we have the freedom to select who we want to lead our country. But as I said, no matter what happens, let's be civil about it and let's move on for the better so that we can see and create a vision for the future. I don't know. That's my one political tidbit for you for the night. But now let's get to the analysis and see what we have in store looking at the picture for tomorrow. So let's get started by taking a look at the 2008 electoral map. Uh, in case you don't know, there are 538 electoral votes up for grabs. You need 270 electoral votes in order to win. And the Electoral College is based on the number of senators and House of Representatives that you have from your state. In case you don't remember, every state has two senators. Your house, uh, the number of representatives in the House that your state has is dependent based on your state population. So for instance, the state of Wisconsin has 10 electoral uh, votes because they have two senators and eight people in the House, coming up to 10. Uh, this so a state's electoral uh, the number of electoral votes they have ranges from three to fifty five, pretty much based on your state population. As you can see here, this is the electoral map from two thousand eight, and Obama won uh, several swing states. And this is kind of what a map would look like, uh, winning seven or beating your opponent by seven percentage points. As you can see, a lot of the swing states will quickly swing uh, based on that margin of victory. So here's what the 2012 map looks like for right now. Obviously, blue being Democrat, red being Republican. Here are the states that we can guarantee for sure. Going into election night, I'm 100% sure that these states are going the way that they are. We have 201 electoral votes going in Obama's column. We have 191 going into Romney's column. I thought about also making Minnesota a swing state as well, but all the polling in the last three months has indicated Minnesota uh, to be a pretty strong state in the Democrats' column. So I'm going to keep it there for now. So when I take a closer look at the polls, in my mind, there are really seven true toss-up states uh, that we'll really be taking a close look at uh, tomorrow night. That's Nevada, Colorado, Iowa, 
Ohio, Virginia, Florida, and New Hampshire. Now, the reason why I put Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania in Obama's column, in North Carolina in Romney's column, is because if you look at the past, uh, at least 10 polls, all of them have gone into that part or that candidate's uh, favor. So if you look at the last 10 to 20 polls uh, for Obama, uh, for the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, all have favored Obama. And the same thing uh, for North Carolina, but in Romney's uh, in his favor. So there's probably about less than a 5% chance that these could still be stolen. But I think it's fair enough to say that these um, are pretty much decided unless something huge change occurs. So I think at this moment it's fair to say that considering these seven toss-up states still up for grabs, Obama has the lead at 247 electoral votes compared to Romney's 206 electoral votes going into the Tuesday election. So when you hear some analysts say that's why Obama has an easier route to get to the 270, as you can see the math here is pretty simple for him to do so. So let's go under uh, and look at some three scenarios for each candidate and what their plans are in order to win. Uh, to so Obama's first option, real simple title, I give this one, Take Florida. Uh, already entering the night, I think he's at 247 electoral votes. If he wins 29 electoral votes from the state of Florida, he'll be at 276, giving him the majority in four more years in the White House. Now, option two for Obama is a little bit more complicated. What he needs to do here, in case he doesn't win Florida, is the need to make sure to take Ohio and then one of the other swing states that is not New Hampshire. So you could take Ohio and Virginia, Ohio and Iowa, Ohio and Colorado, or Ohio and Nevada. That will for sure get him over the 270 electoral votes needed in order to become the next president. That's why a lot of the times you'll hear the Obama and Biden campaign talk about the Midwest firewall between winning Ohio, Wisconsin, and Iowa, because winning those three states really guarantees Obama to win the re-election tomorrow night. Okay, so that gets us to the last plan or last backup option for the Obama camp. And that is, if you don't win Florida, and if you don't win Ohio, don't panic. The Obama campaign still has a chance to win re-election by winning four of the five remaining toss-up states. As you can see here in this scenario, I gave the Obama camp Nevada, Colorado, Iowa, and New Hampshire, and he still gets over his 270 limit that is needed to win re-election. So therefore, while we put a lot of attention in Florida and Ohio, these states won't be the only ones that dictate whether or not Obama wins re-election Tuesday night. All right, now that we talked a little bit about Obama and his chances and options of winning the election, let's talk about Governor Mitt Romney. Now, as we indicated before, assuming that these are the seven true toss-up states that polls show us, we now know that Mitt Romney needs to win Florida in order to have a chance to become the next president of the United States. So therefore, as we look at his options, let's assume that he needs to win Florida in order for us to have this conversation. All right, let's get to the options. All right, so Governor Romney's first option, assuming that he wins Florida, is to win Ohio, Virginia, and then one of the remaining four toss-up states in order to eclipse the 270 mark. This would give him enough to beat out Obama and to become the 45th president of the United States. Now, if Governor Romney does not win Ohio, once again assuming that he wins Florida, his next option is to simply win the remaining five toss-up states. If he can win Nevada, Colorado, Iowa, Virginia, and New Hampshire, that would give Governor Romney 273 electoral votes, beating out Obama and becoming president next year. Okay, so for fun, let's say Romney doesn't win Ohio, and let's say he doesn't win Florida. 
So what would he have to do in order to get 270? So this gets us to the third option for Governor Romney. Not only would he have to win the five toss-up states that I've identified earlier in this episode, but he's going to have to win states that are right now polling in Obama's favor. The two I identified here, which I think would be the most logical ones, are Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. I believe this is why Governor Romney and Representative Ryan are trying to extend the battleground states. Even though the polls are not in their favor right now, by trying to stretch these out to the best of their ability before Tuesday night, it gives them more options in case they lose Ohio and Florida. So now we get to the last scenario, which I don't think benefits any candidates, and it doesn't benefit the American people. So as we revisit the map, remember these are the seven true toss-up states that I believe entering Tuesday night. But if you remember, in the beginning of the episode, I said there were 538 electoral votes. Notice how that is an even number, and if you divide it by two, you get 269. All right, now look at this map. Notice when I give Governor Romney Nevada, Colorado, Iowa, Virginia, and Florida, and when I give President Obama Ohio and New Hampshire, Notice that each candidate has 269 electoral votes. In this case, we're at a dead tie. So what happens? Good question. In this case scenario, the House of Representatives would determine who's the President of the United States, and the U.S. Senate would determine who is the Vice President of the United States. Well, early projections show that the Republicans should have the majority in the House of Representatives and will most likely nominate Mitt Romney as the next president of the United States. But then when we, when, we re, when we visit the U.S. Senate, the U.S. Senate is projected to have more Democrats than Republicans. And in that model, we would almost anticipate the Senate to nominate Joe Biden to be the next vice president of the United States. So as comical as this may sound, a Romney-Biden ticket for 2013 to 2016 is not that far-fetched and could happen to you and I starting tomorrow. So what's my prediction, you ask? Well, when I think everything is said and done tomorrow night, looking at the seven true toss-up states, I think we'll see Obama take Nevada, Iowa, Ohio, Virginia, in New Hampshire. Meanwhile, I think Governor Romney will end up taking Florida and Colorado and putting that into his column. But Obama will take the victory, winning 294 to 244 electoral votes. You know, from a statistical analysis viewpoint, Obama has been polling much stronger in the states of Nevada, Iowa, Ohio, and New Hampshire. The three true toss-up states, the ones that I literally think could go either way, are Virginia, Florida, and Colorado. Virginia, I think, goes Obama, Obama because of a strong senatorial race between Tim Kaine and George Allen. Romney's been pulling slightly more strongly in the state of Florida, and therefore I'll give him those 29 electoral votes. Finally, I have a sneaky suspicion that the rural vote will be very strong in Colorado and will support Romney giving him nine more electoral votes. But in the end, I think Obama will pull it off as the Electoral College just is more in his favor than Governor Romney's. Thanks for taking 15 minutes out of your day checking out this video, and I hope you got some things out of it. But now I turn it over to you to go out and vote. Educate yourself on the candidates. Educate yourself on the issues. And after you do that, well, you get to sit down Tuesday night and enjoy the election results. <laughs> I know I surely will. Lastly, if you want to offer any of your opinions as far as what you think the election results will be, feel free to put those guesses at the bottom of this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and best of luck to all supporters Tuesday night.